Please remember that the complete information for the class that you are about to view is at elithecomputerguy.com. Not only do we have our videos there, but we have part lists, diagrams, pictures, and even complete code examples. So if you are watching this video and you want more information, please go to elithecomputerguy.com. Welcome back. As you know, I am Eli the Computer Guy, and in today's class, I'm going to show you how to use CSS to modify your formatting of text and images based off of if somebody is using their mouse and hovering over those text or images. So this can be a useful way to give a little bit of a pizzazz to your website or your HTML document, or simply make it easier uh, for your visitors, for your users to be able to understand what's going on. Uh, so basically what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be using P tags, we're going to be using TR tags, and then I'm going to be showing you how to do this with images. And basically what's going to happen is if you, if you highlight over a P tag, uh, it is going to have a background color of gray. So let's imagine I'm reading through a document, I see something, oh, somebody else should probably see this, I can put the mouse over uh, that P tag area, it will show up gray, and then I can say, hey, 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 read this. And then when the person comes over, they're not going to be like, uh, what do you mean? by this what th what am I supposed to read right you can hover over uh, the paragraph and it'll be gray and it's read what's in the gray right or again if you're going to be doing things like looking at reports and you have a table one of the big problems with tables is if you get a big table you got a lot of columns you got a row a lot of rows you got a lot of data you're just simply looking at it trying to discern some information one of the issues especially on a computer screen is it can be difficult to determine what information is in a particular row so if that entire row turns to a color when you hover over it it's easy to use your mouse and just kind of roll down the rows and be like okay that information looks good and that information looks good oh yep right there that's the problem and so if you have that entire row highlighted it makes your life a lot easier then when we get to images this is just something uh, that you can use to give a little pizzazz a little pop to your HTML document and what I'm going to be showing you today is I'm going to have a single image so let's say you have a single image on your HTML document and when you roll over it it's simply going to get bigger and it's going to have a border around it so let's let's say as let's say you have like little small images in your document and uh, maybe for like diagrams something like that and so maybe most people are just going to skip by they're not going to really care about looking at the diagram so you want to make it small uh, so that it doesn't disturb the flow of when people are reading through your HTML documents but there are going to be some people that are actually going to be interested in that diagram or that image and so what you can have is they can roll over that image and then that image can get larger uh, and emphasis can be brought to it so people can go oh okay that's what this person is talking about here um, and then I'm going to show you creating a very basic image gallery where you're going to have a lot of images in a row. And then again, when you roll over one of the images in that gallery, it will get larger uh, so that you can look at it a, a little bit better. And so this is really cool. Uh, you do not need JavaScript to do this. This is basic HTML and basic CSS. All this is doing is you're with CSS, you're saying when you hover over some tag, uh, some element within your HTML document, you want the CSS styling to be modified and to show up in a different way. And that will actually give you a better of a dynamic website. So with that, let's go over to the computer and I can show you how this works. So here we are back in my demonstration machine. Again, I'm using a MacBook and I wrote this code in text edit, but all you need is a basic ASCII text editor. So if you're in the Windows world, you can use Notepad. In the Mac world, you can use text edit. And if you're in the Linux world, you can use gedit, nano, vim, whatever you want, a basic ASCII text editor. Uh, we have two documents for this project today. Uh, one is going to be the hover.html. So this is actually the, uh, the document that you're going to double click and it's going to open up with the web browser. And then that is going to be pointing back for CSS to hover style.css. So this will be our CSS style sheet. Before I actually go and start showing you the code, uh, I figure it would probably be best if I show you the demonstrations so you understand what the CSS is doing when I'm explaining it. And so here I have a demonstration of different examples of what can be done when you hover over an element or a tag uh, in the HTML with CSS. Uh, so up here I have some p tags. So up here the 
first three things I have are p tags. And with these p tags, what you'll notice is if I hover over the p tags, the background color goes to gray. So again, think about this from a user experience perspective. Imagine if you have some kind of technical documentation or you have some kind of report, you're looking through it, you see something of interest, you want a coworker to, to read it, see what their feelings are about it. And basically, instead of simply pointing them at the screen or getting your fingers on the screen or whatever else to show them what you're talking about, uh, with this, basically, you can have the CSS, you can simply hover over that particular paragraph and you can say, hey, hey, Bob, hey, Sue, uh, what do you think about this paragraph? Do you think this is something that we should care about? And when they come over and take a look, they're not going to have to guess at what you're what you're saying. They can they can obviously see, oh, that's being highlighted. Uh, yes. They, they agree, they disagree, whatever else. Uh, we're gonna go down here, and I also created a table. So this is a table. Again, tables are big deals, uh, especially like in the IoT world, when you're dealing with reports. Imagine if you have a lot of sensors. Imagine if you have a lot of information coming in, and then you're spitting out a table so that an end user can then see what the results are. One of the problems you run into is with these tables, they can be very large. Imagine if they have 20 or 30 columns. Imagine if they have a thousand rows. And so somebody is trying to scan through and take a look at all of this information in a table and try to figure out what's important and what's not. Simply by being able to hover over a row and have that entire row be highlighted, that can make their life a lot easier. So you can go, okay, this is uh, this is row one, item one good, item two good, item three good. Row two, item one good, item two good, item three good. Row three, item one good, ooh, what about item two? And then again, since it's highlighted like this, I can go, hey, Tim, hey, Sally, uh, I don't know this 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 uh, this row three here. How do you feel about those numbers? I'm a little worried about those numbers, right? Again, it's a simple way to make the user experience better when somebody's trying to read through reports and things. Past that, we can go down to images. So just like you can use the hover on text, you can do it on images. And so what I have here is I have uh, formatted. I formatted this image to be a certain size when it's not being hovered over. And when I hover over it, you can see that it gets a lot bigger and it gets a border around it. Uh, so for a user experience perspective, imagine if you have an HTML document with a lot of diagrams. Let's say it has a lot of diagrams. It has a lot of pictures. And for the most part, let's be honest, most people are going to ignore all those diagrams and pictures. So if you make them really big in your document, that's what users are going to have to scroll by and it's going to make it more difficult for people to be able to read that document. So imagine if basically you make all the images relatively small on the page. So if people don't care about them, they can keep scrolling on by, but then for the engineers or for people that actually care about those pictures or those, the, those diagrams, they can simply scroll over it and they can take a look and go, oh, okay, now, yeah, okay, I see the, the power goes X, Y, or Z, or the water goes X, Y, or Z, right? Uh, and so this is one of the things you can do with CSS. Past that, down here, I have like a little image gallery. So imagine creating a simple gallery. Uh, and with this, again, all the images are of a certain size. And then when I scroll over them, you can see they increase in size. And then I just put a little yellow border around them, uh, just so. And so you'll notice, or you may not notice yet, but basically the important thing here is that this is all CSS. There is no JavaScript. There's no additional additional coding involved with this. This is simply HTML and CSS. So let's take a look at how this works. Uh, so we have our HTML document like we normally do. We'll talk about this in a second. The important thing is that this is pointing back to the hover style CSS style sheet. So let's go take a look at that. Uh, here we have the hover style CSS sheet. And basically here's just the, the CSS that I've created. Uh, so what we have here for the hover is basically I have the tag or in CSS, the element. So we have the P tag or the P element. We have the TR. So this is for a table row. We have the IMG. Uh, these two places. Uh, then I've created a class of gallery and I have this for the gallery. And so basically what this is, is you have the tag or element, basically the tag or the class, you do colon and then you basically just write hover. So P colon hover or dot gallery colon hover. And it says when uh, something is being hovered over, this is how the CSS should be modified. Uh, so for here, for P, I simply am saying that the background color should be modified to light gray. For the TR for hover, I'm simply saying the background color should be modified to yellow. For IMG, 
hover. I'm saying the width should be 300 pixels, the height should be auto, and the border should be that 10 pixels solid gray. And then dot gallery, so do remember the period, period gallery, colon hover, the width should be 200 pixels, the height should be auto, and the border should be three pixels solid yellow. So the important thing here is white space does matter when you're doing this. So do make sure you have the class or the tag, then you have the colon, then you have hover, all smooshed together. Uh, do worry about white space with this part. Um, then past that, uh, I did have to define what the default uh, uh, CSS should be for the IMG and for the gallery class. So what I have here is a normal image. So if I use the image tag in HTML, I want the display to be a block, the margin left to be auto, the margin right to be auto. So what this is going to do is this is going to center the image. So the image is going to be in the center of the web browser. And then I simply want the width to be 150 pixels and then the height to be auto, right? So this is going to center uh, the image in the middle of the, uh, the web browser with a width of 150 pixels. When I hover over the image, it will then modify the width to be 300 pixels, again, height to be auto, and then it's gonna give it a border that is 10 pixels of solid gray. Then what I've done for the gallery class, so I've created a gallery class, period gallery. So this is going to be a display inline block. So when I showed you basically that image gallery, so for the images to be basically be in a line, look like that, um, you use display inline block. I then did the width of 150 pixels, height to be auto. And then for this, for the standard class of gallery, I actually gave a 10 pixel uh, solid white border. Uh, so when you take a look at the example, that's what, see how, see how there's that nice little gap between all of the images and default? Uh, that's what does that is I, I basically I give it, it gave each image a 10 pixel white border uh, it, it spaces the images out a little bit and then when I hover over the image um, it just it gives a little space it's not not so bad that's why I did that uh, then we have down here again gallery hover where they're going to enlarge the images to 200 pixels from 150 height will be auto again border is going to be three pixels solid yellow and so again that's where we get this. It gets to be a little bit bigger and it gets to be highlighted. This may be useful for you uh, when you're dealing with the user experience. Uh, then from there, we're gonna go and we're gonna take a look at the actual HTML document itself. So if we take a look at hover.html, so this is what you're actually gonna be opening up in the web browser. Again, the HTML, the head, the link, the close the head, the body. Then this is all we have. So we don't have any special coding in the HTML document, so we're using basic p tags. Since we define this in the CSS, all we have to do is basic p tags, not even use a class, um, and I put those different paragraphs in there. I then created a table, again, you'll notice here, uh, since I use the tr element, the tr tag within CSS, I don't have to put a class or anything else in here. Simply, whenever it sees the tr, it will put that formatting on it. Then we're going to come down here, Again, we're going to have that image, so that, that image that's centered, that's gonna be the image, SRC, the same picture I've used a thousand times at this point, um, and that's simply going to be there. So again, you're noticing there's no additional class, there's no additional coding within the HTML, it is simply going to be going to the CSS, seeing what the CSS has to say, and then bringing it in. Uh, past that, we're going to go down, and then we're gonna create that little gallery. So I did a break here, I did a break, just to give a bit of space, and then for the gallery, all I essentially did was copy and paste the same, the same image um, you know, six times here. But for here, we're going to do IMG. We're then going to make a class of gallery, right? So that's going to give us the display type of inline block and give me all of the other CSS values that I set up. And that's all we have. We then close the body. We then close the HTML. And then this is the finished document. So when I hover over the P tags, they get highlighted. When I hover over the TR tags, they get highlighted. When I ho hover over the basic IMG, that gets uh, increased in size and border. Same is true down here. This is the, the gallery class that I created um, in the CSS. There's not a lot to it. Again, all you're gonna be doing is you're gonna be doing the element or the class. You're gonna do a colon, then you're simply going to say hover, and then past that, you're gonna plug things in. You could change the font if you wanted to. You can make things bold. Uh, so I'll say almost, <laughs> almost I think, maybe all, but almost all the, the, the CSS formatting, uh, you 
can modify using the hover. So you, you might actually be able to do something far more sophisticated uh, than simply changing the background color to something different. So this is how the hover works with CSS. And I think you can see this makes a, a slightly uh, dynamic uh, website HTML document for you uh, that can make it a lot easier for your end users to be able to consume and understand. So now you know how to use hover in CSS. Again, it's an incredibly simple set thing. Basically, you have the element or tag. So it's called element in CSS, tag in HTML, but again, P, H1, IMG, whatever else. You do colon, you say hover, and then you put in the formatting. How, how do you want that to be formatted if somebody is hovering over it? Again, you can do the same thing with class. So you can create different classes. Again, different classes for different types of images, different classes, you know, if you're gonna be like doing galleries and that type of thing. And then you just assign the class uh, to whatever tag or element uh, that you care about and away you go. You can get some of this nice dynamic um, dynamic formatting to make your page uh, work a little bit better for your end users. Again, that's going to be an important thing whenever you're out there and you're going to be creating these HTML documents. A lot of times the HTML documents, the web pages that you're going to be creating, they're going to be pulling information in from things like sensors, uh, from other sources, and basically they're going to be presenting information to the end user. And remember, just because you present information to the end user does not mean you did a good job. You have to present information to the end user in such a way that the end user knows what the hell they're looking at. Right? If you just dump a whole bunch of image or a whole bunch of information into the web browser and you're like, I did my job, everything printed out properly. Uh, but the end user has no idea what they're looking at. Um, you, you haven't done your job properly. Part of doing your job is presenting the information in such a way that the end user can actually use it in an efficient manner. And so that's one of the things that using Hover can do. Again, simply like I say, especially with tables, a lot of times when you're printing out reports, essentially a lot of what you're going to be doing is essentially creating tables of one type or another. So simply being able to hover over rows in a a table have an entire row light up so that you can verify okay yes I, I'm actually following everything across everything is how I think it's supposed to be and then go to the next and go to the next and go to the next literally you putting whatever it is four lines four lines of code something like you know I don't know, 40, 50 characters of code in your CSS uh, to allow that to happen, that can make life uh, for all of your users a hell of a lot easier for years and years and years as they use the reporting system that you've been able to create. So Hover is one of those things that is incredibly simple, but also incredibly valuable. And it's definitely something you should uh, play around with. So as always, I enjoy doing this class. I look forward to seeing you in the next one. If you like the content that I create, please think about going to elinethecomputerguy.com and becoming a member or donating. Please understand that all the educational videos are in front of the paywall. That includes the videos, that includes the notes, the diagrams, and the code example. All of that is freely available and in front of the paywall. But if you want to watch opinion videos or if you want to be able to comment, you do need to become a member. Membership is $5 a month or $60 a year and gives you access to those opinion videos and the ability uh, to comment. If you don't want to become a member, you just want to give a one-time uh, donation, there is also a donate button where you can do that. Please understand, in order to provide the education that I am, it does cost money. The servers cost money, equipment costs money, travel costs money. All of these things cost a reasonable amount of money. And the fact of the matter is, is YouTube's advertising program no longer supports creators the way that it used to. So if you want to these classes to continue to stick around and you find them to be valuable, please think about either becoming a monthly member or donating a few dollars for this project.